All right, so we just got the the timing cover off of this 2012 Chevrolet Traverse uh, the, with a 3.6 high feature or alloy tech. Uh, we had a code for uh, a P0017 for the Bank 1 exhaust camshaft crankshaft correlation. Uh, and this is what we have so far. This is the Bank 2 tensioner chain seems fairly tight however but on the bank one this moves quite a bit on the top even and then if you look a little further by this guide you can almost pull the chain off That side tensioner, you actually can't move. Same thing with the center chain. However, on the center chain, I could probably pull this off of this gear here if I wanted to. This is with a new timing chain installed. And everything's tight. So this is the vehicle. Um, these timing chain issues are known about and still occurring. Uh, GM's had some fixes allegedly in the past, um, but people are still having problems with these. Uh, there's some service bulletins out there for other vehicles about uh, chain links that weren't hardened and things like that. Um, what I found when I got into this thing was that the chain was actually stretched um, meaning that the pins or the chain itself had worn and there was slack in it and it was physically longer than what it should have been. Uh, this all started out with setting correlation codes uh, for crankshaft camshaft. Um, I basically confirmed that the camshaft position sensors were working um, and then tried replacing the uh, variable valve timing or oil control valve uh, solenoid. Uh, that's what controls the position of these actuators. Uh, at that point, um, the, I knew it was a chain fault and that's when I decided I needed to put a chain in. Um, in the process of that decision, I turned to YouTube for something that would prove to me that this could be done in the vehicle and there's really not a whole lot out there. 
uh, the one thing that made my decision was watching the Cloys video, uh, which is the manufacturer of this timing chain kit, on how to do the timing chain. And they mentioned it can be done in the vehicle. So instead of dropping the engine, um, we just went ahead and started tearing it apart. You have to pull the intake manifold, the junction box, the valve covers, um, the alternator has to come partially off. There's a stud you have to pull out here. The power steering reservoir, the power steering pump, there's two bolts that hold that in. Um, one up here and one that you access from behind on the bottom, uh, which you need some extensions to get to. Uh, the coolant pipe that runs along here, the motor mount as well. Um, and then, uh, when you pull, when you're going to pull the cover, you have to unbolt this AC line here, 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 and here in order to get clearance. Uh, also, you do have to pull the solenoids and camshaft position sensors out of the cover before you try and maneuver it out of here. Uh, not only could you damage things, but it makes it a hell of a lot easier. And I just want to say, um, this isn't an extremely difficult job. I'd want to have someone there to help me, because um, there's some places where you need more than two hands. And make sure that you are extremely well organized. Uh, this is my garage floor right now. Um, but that's basically it. I'm getting ready to put this thing all back together. Uh, timing is set. And um, uh, one thing that you might want to do while you're in here, um, besides replacing stuff like the water pump um, that's on the timing cover, the oil pressure sensor is down here, and it's behind the alternator. Uh, that's over a three-hour job if you're doing it separately. Uh, since you can get to it when this is all apart, that's a good idea to do. Um, and uh, that's about it. I, I hope this helps some people out who are deciding whether or not to do this job on their own. Um, so, good luck. And it lives again. What's that? Oh, I was just taking a video of it running. Just to prove that we fixed it. It sounds much quieter.